Today, we're gonna to continue exploring some of the best Mexico City galleries, starting in the neighborhood of Polanco. And if you haven't seen my last video of Mexico City galleries, you can find it linked below and above. This is the first gallery we're visiting, and it is Proyectos Monclova, which has moved from Roma Norte to this brand new, beautiful space in Polanco. And we're gonna see three exhibits, starting here with this first exhibit by Gabriel de la Mora. If you're not familiar with Gabriel de la Mora's work, he's known for creating his works from these tiny pieces of objects, such as eggshells or feathers or even butterfly wings. This large black piece here is created from a lot of pieces of obsidian, which is a type of volcanic rock that has, quote, many ancestral uses in Mesoamerican cultures. And this gray work as well is made from anesite, which is another type of volcanic rock. He is someone that I would love to see in the studio just creating these works. I can't even imagine the amount of time and patience that it takes. Kind of reminds me actually of Liza Lau's really intricately beaded works in the sense of the amount of patience and detail it takes to create them. Every type of material that Gabriel has chosen to use in his works for this exhibit are ones where the viewer can really appreciate their quote genetic code. Sort of in the way that like no one snowflake is alike. Materials like butterfly wings and eggshells, they carry a pattern that can communicate visually something about its kind. Upstairs is an exhibit by Tercer Unquin, which roughly translates to as a third of a fifth. They're a collective of Mexican artists, three artists in particular, um, that started in 1996. And I will say this is a very conceptual exhibit, to say the least, but I will try my best to interpret it. The title of the exhibit in English is about shape and color, and I think that's what it's meant to convey. It's meant to convey the process of how artworks are created. First of all, in the literal sense, the works show how materials can be scavenged to create sculptures and paintings. And then also in the metaphorical sense, these works represent how an artist and therefore their artworks are influenced by their culture and their surroundings. You can see examples of this in everything from famous sort of religious symbolage here to commercial symbols such as, you know, alcohol. <laughs> At the very top of the gallery, there's this lovely viewing room space and it features some sculptures by Martin Soto Clement and other various artists as viewing rooms do.
Now we're heading over to Moran Moran, which is an LA gallery that opened this space in Mexico City in 2021. It's still in the neighborhood of Polanco. It's right down the street from Proyectus Monclova. And this is an exhibit of works by the Brooklyn-based artist, Kenny Rivero. And Kenny just had an exhibit at the Momentary in Bentonville, which I had the privilege of visiting in August. And you can see a video for that. I'll link it down below and above. But in this incredible space, there's actually an area where an artist can stay and have a residency, which is what I'm guessing Rivero did here. And the exhibit is titled, quote, I'm missing. And it's meant to represent feelings of self-isolation and exile and the loneliness that Rivero experienced when creating these works in a new place that was really far away from his home. So we're now in the neighborhood of Condesa, and there are quite a few galleries in this area. They're just a few blocks from one another, so it's definitely a great neighborhood in addition to Roma Norte if you want to see a lot of exhibits at once. Our first stop is Curry Manzuto Gallery, which has one of the most impressive spaces, in my opinion. And this is an exhibit by the artist Lenora Atunes, titled The Homemaker and Her Domain, Part 3. And in this show, she explores the, quote, legacy of different female creators of the 20th century that are often a source of inspiration for the artist. And some examples of these inspirations are Annie Albers, Eileen Gray, and Lena Meyer Bergner, to name a few. And this exhibit focuses specifically on the work of Lena Meyer Bergner. And this artist and her husband were members of the second generation of Bauhaus, and they had to migrate to Mexico in the 1930s due to war in their home country. And Atunes has created these sculptures with a nod to Bauhaus, as well as weaving in, no pun intended, her own style and influences.
Another thing I love about Kuri Munzuto is its little library in the front of the gallery. It always has some really great items. We're now at Galleria RGR to see an exhibit by the Chinese artist Ding Yi titled Anomalous Galaxies. And this is his first solo exhibit in Latin America. And he is known for really driving geometric abstraction as a style of acceptable contemporary art in China. And he's been incorporating these crosses or stitches into his work since the 1980s. And like many geometric artists, Yi's work focuses on the subject and breaking down the subject into its most primitive forms, which he's done through these crosses and lines. We are going to end the day with a group show at Labor Gallery, and Labor is famously located next to the Louise Berrigan House. So you might feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, but <laughs> these treasures are actually tucked right away once you arrive. And this is a group show. I couldn't actually find any information on it, so I won't really be able to speak much to this, but you can just enjoy it. And this is a solo exhibit by Antonio Vega Macotella titled, It is a corpse, it is dust, it is shadow, it is nothing. And these sculptures were inspired by altar pieces and how they sometimes can display skin, nails, bones, and pieces of clothing that once belonged to saints. And he's chosen objects of the church because it's often the church that determines the class system of a culture, or at least it did back in the time he's referring to. He's using the symbolism of the church to draw parallels to how the tech industry exploits African and Latin American countries for their raw materials. And I know we often think about technology as something that's magical or revolutionary, but it does require these raw materials that are built on the backs of nations in the very same way that the church exploited these countries for hundreds of years. I also wasn't able to find any information on this cool little design outhouse, but I'm very into it. We're going to end the night at Azul Historico, which is one of my favorite restaurants in Mexico City. I highly recommend getting some type of mole here. It is located in the historic district, which is my absolute favorite to visit at night, mostly to see this incredible church. I mean, it's just, it never, it never gets old. It's absolutely breathtaking. So I hope you all enjoyed my videos from Mexico City and my next videos will be featuring galleries from Los Angeles as well as the Freeze LA Art Fair. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Make sure your notifications are turned on and I will see you all in my next video.